everybody, it's Dean Phillips from Minnesota's 3rd Congressional District, joining you from just outside the United States Capitol building. For 220 years, this is where our Congress has met to discuss, debate, and vote on the very laws that have shaped our nation. I'm in awe every single time I walk up to the building, and giving my fellow Minnesotans a tour is one of the favorite things I get to do in Washington. So let's head inside and explore some of the history, art, and even a little bit of Minnesota nice that the Capitol has to offer. Come on in. And this is my office in the Rayburn House Office Building, where my amazing team and I, and even occasionally our parliamentarian, my dog Henry, work on behalf of our district and our country. There are three House Office Buildings, Longworth, Rayburn, and Cannon, each named after long-ago speakers of the House. We love visitors, and we hope you'll come by someday and add a pin to our constituent map. My staff and I spend our time in the office meeting with constituents, drafting legislation, and preparing for committee hearings. And we take our Minnesota pride just as seriously as our work. Now, if you're wondering how it's possible to make it to all my meetings so quickly, well, now you know my little secret. Since it's often 100 degrees and humid in the summer, I usually walk through the underground tunnels, but if I'm in a rush, I'll take the Rayburn train which is straight out of Disneyland circa 1965. And this is the latest addition to the Capitol Complex, the Capitol Visitor Center, which was completed in 2008. Emancipation Hall, named to honor and recognize the slaves who built the Capitol building, is highlighted by the magnificent Statue of Freedom, identical to the one that stands atop the Capitol Dome. In Emancipation Hall, you'll find some of the National Statuary Hall collection, which is dispersed throughout the entire Capitol Complex. Each state contributes two statues of their choice to recognize remarkable figures in American history. Now this statue right here from our neighbor North Dakota honors Sacagawea for her courage and bravery in leading Lewis and Clark across the uncharted frontier. Now I'm a little bit biased of course, but one of my personal favorites is the Minnesota statue of Maria Sanford. A champion of equal rights, conservation, and education, Maria was one of the very first women in the entire country to be named a college professor. She was also the very first female professor at my alma mater, the University of Minnesota. Now let's move on to one of the most famous and kind of creepy sections of the Capitol building, the crypt. The crypt was originally built as a final resting place for George Washington. However, he and Martha wished that he would be buried at Mount Vernon instead, and the crypt remains empty to this very day. The crypt itself was completed in 1827 and lies directly beneath the rotunda where its 40 columns support the entire weight of the building. Inside the crypt, there are 13 statues, one from each of the original 13 states. The crypt also holds a replica of the Magna Carta, gifted to us by the United Kingdom as a token of friendship. It were those ideals of the Magna Carta which provided the inspiration for our own nation's founding documents, the Declaration of Independence and the Constitution, 561 years later. Now, if you look very carefully at the columns, you can actually see the chisel marks that were left by enslaved craftsmen who built the United States Capitol back in the late 1790s. It's rather remarkable. Now I've got something really cool to show you that very few people are aware of, so follow me. Okay. So this is fun. Imagine 1795 or so when they poured the original floor of the Capitol here and a little cat, a little kitten probably, walked through the concrete before it dried. And if you look carefully, you can see the paw prints. And right up these stairs is the famous Capitol Rotunda, the Rotunda is one of my favorite places in all of Washington and is commonly referred to as the physical heart of the Capitol. Completed in 1866 after almost a half century of construction, the Rotunda is an American icon. On the dome itself is the Apotheosis of Washington, a stunning mural painted by Constantino Bramidi. The Apotheosis shows George Washington rising into the heavens accompanied by two female figures representing liberty and victory and surrounded by 13 maidens in honor of the 13 colonies. The rotunda also features the frieze of American history, which details the history of the United States of America, beginning with the landing of Columbus and ending with the birth of aviation, which was actually added years later to fill in a gap that was left because the original artist mismeasured the circumference. The rotunda is also home to many statues of extraordinary American figures. Some of the permanent residents of the rotunda include a sculpture of suffragists, Lucretia Mott, Elizabeth Cady Stanton, and Susan B. Anthony. A popular rumor says that the unfinished part represents the work still needed to be done for women's rights. Other statues in the rotunda include Martin Luther King Jr., Thomas Jefferson, and Ronald Reagan, which has a piece of the Berlin Wall in it for his famous 1987 speech. 
Not only Special Forks art, many people, including Lincoln, Kennedy, Reagan, and John Lewis more recently, have lain in state right here. Supreme Court Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg was the very first woman to lie in state in the U.S. Capitol. Lying in state is an honor granted to certain eminent citizens and distinguished public servants, as determined by Congress. Here they are guarded constantly by the Capitol Police Honor Guard, and people can come to the rotunda and pay their final respects. Former presidents at Lyon State are guarded by a member of each branch of the military. And we can't forget about the iconic paintings by John Trumbull in the rotunda. His paintings depict the signing of the Declaration of Independence, the surrender of British General Burgoyne during the Battle of Saratoga, and the surrender of British General Cornwallis during the Battle of Yorktown. One of my personal favorites is the General George Washington resigning his commission painting. This selfless act by our nation's very first president established civilian control of the military and was an essential step towards establishing a democratic nation. Now let's move on to Statuary Hall. The largest collection of statues from the Statuary Hall collection are found right here, including our second Minnesota statue commemorating Henry Rice. Henry Rice lobbied for the bill to establish the Minnesota Territory and served as its delegate to the U.S. Congress from 1853 to 1857 and was elected one of Minnesota's first senators. However, Statuary Hall used to be exactly where the U.S. House of Representatives conducted legislative business, including Abraham Lincoln, who sat at a desk right here. Many important events also took place here when it served as the House floor. Presidents James Madison, James Monroe, John Quincy Adams, Andrew Jackson, and Millard Fillmore were inaugurated right here in the old House of Representatives. The smooth, curved ceilings, however, created echoes that made it very difficult to hold debates. Additionally, as our country grew, so did the number of representatives. So by 1850, there were 233 representatives, each with their own small desk right here in the hall. The lack of office space quickly became apparent. The only solution was to build an entirely new hall, one in which debates could easily be heard. In 1850, a new hall was authorized, and the House moved into its current chamber in 1857. Six months later, our state of Minnesota joined the Union. The fate of the vacated hall remained uncertain for many years. Eventually, the idea of using the chamber as an art gallery was approved and various works were put on exhibit. In 1864, Congress invited each state to contribute two statues of prominent citizens for permanent display in the room, and thus it received its new name, National Statuary Hall. The Senate Fountain is another capital fixture with Minnesota roots as well. Authorization for its construction was given on March 4, 1929. The fountain was designed by architects Bennett, Parsons, and Frost, and built under the direction of architect of the Capitol, David Lynn. The main fountain is fabricated of Minnesota pink granite, with a basin of Minnesota green granite. Here you can see a memorial honoring Vietnam veterans of Minnesota on the Capitol grounds. The white oak is not just a symbol of peace and remembrance, but also a dedication to the incredible sacrifices many soldiers made for our country. And as a Gold Star son myself, who lost my birth father in Vietnam, this memorial holds a very special place in my heart. This is the floor of the U.S. House of Representatives, where legislation is debated and where I proudly cast my votes as your representative by placing this plastic card into this very 1980s looking machine. This is also where the annual State of the Union is held, where the Speaker of the House invites the President to deliver a speech to Congress and the country. The House floor is also one of the very few places I get a chance to hang out and discuss matters with my fellow representatives. Members of Congress use the floor to share ideas, learn new perspectives, and quite literally cross this very aisle, the one right here, to talk with one another. Thanks so much for joining me today on our virtual tour of the United States Capitol. Now, if you ever need assistance from my office, please visit my website or call our office. It is an honor to serve you, and my door is always open. So come on in. Everyone's invited. <music>